Okay, welcome to uh, first time. Welcome to my talk. Um, hello. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, today I'm going to tell you how we're using Valiant in IBS systems. Um, I would uh, like to give you a short overview of what I'm doing in my daily life or in my work. Um, I would give a really high level overview of the Linux graphics stack so you know uh, which component I'm uh, talking about and where we are placed in the stack. Um, then I would like you to explain why IBS system needs something different as a usual desktop system. And uh, the main part should cover then the usage of Western uh, as a valiant compositor in IBI. Um, and then I would also like to talk about what's coming next, uh, what we're planning to do and what we already um, have done and are planning to upstream. So my name is Eugen Fiedrich. I'm working from ADIT, uh, for ADIT since 2010. I started um, handling graphics stacks uh, in the company and uh, till today I'm doing uh, the same job actually. Um, I'm responsible for the complete uh, graphics stack. It's a video and display pipeline, uh, GPU and uh, all surrounding and related components. Um, I would like also give you an overview of what we are doing in ADIT so you know uh, why we actually we need, uh, why we choose the Western and uh, Valiant as a graphics system. Uh, ADIT was ba uh, grounded in 2003 from Bosch and Denso. From those big two companies we are getting a lot of requirements, we need to harmonize them and create the one single platform um, which will cover all the requirements. Um, base, uh, the biggest part of the software we are getting delivered, but uh, still to implement the use cases we need to, um, uh, to implement some additional components or enable features and modify the stacks uh, a bit. Once we are done, uh, actually it's, it's never really done, so it's a continuous integration running and change requests and so on, we're delivering the platform to other companies and they're building uh, projects on top of it. So for us it's very important to have something really generic here um, which will cover both requirements and also um, practically there are like up to 10 projects um, using this at the same time. So this is the overview of the graphics stack, very simplified. Uh, you can see on the upper level the applications, uh, they can use some frameworks, uh, they will, uh, in this diagram they are all using Valiant. They have to talk with Valiant Compositor, which is Western in this case. Uh, there is OpenGL driver, you can see here that the compositor and the applications are able to use the same <coughs> driver, thanks to the Valiant EGL implementation. Um, and the compositor is actually then responsible to um, give the final content, final results of all applications to the uh, kernel Mozza driver and then to display. <coughs> so I think that's it. And uh, now I would like to talk a bit, of, a bit more of Western itself. Um, the Western um, has a really good defined plugin infrastructure. Um, you can have, um, or you have to have three uh, plugins at least. Um, one plugin is a renderer, which will uh, use the OpenGL driver to make a composition, actually render the stuff in the compositor. There is a backend. Um, most of the time we are using the DRM backend, but you could also use, for example, the variant backend, which will output the, uh, the final result to a different valiant compositor, so creating Nested compositing is um, quite easy. And uh, there is a shell. Um, the shell is actually, or the implementation of the shell defines the window management. It will provide some variant protocols to, to the applications and they have to use it and talk with this protocol to compositor to then request how they want to be presented. Um, there is no different process or component uh, which will um, decide how to behave. So this is all implemented in the shell. Um, 
and this is exactly the main difference what we uh, don't like in AVI or what, what we cannot directly use in AVI because our customers has um, uh, very different requirements, uh, very different ideas how the uh, application would look like and the complete setup of the system. They could have uh, screens with one application or five or three. They can, they want to have them slide away and uh, flying in from different directions. And uh, they also asking for us, for example, to implement something which will ensure that um, the arrangement of application and the application content change will happen in the fr same vision. Um, it's quite hard to achieve because the, the APIs are, 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 are asynchronously implemented, there are some events, and um, it's hard really to synchronize uh, different protocols and APIs. Um, looking uh, closer to our idea, so how to tackle this problem, we decided to uh, implement a special shell which will provide a provide the interface to outside so you could implement your window management um, outside of Western it should be uh, really only this it should be really a slim interface or it is a slim interface which will uh, allow you to control uh, the composition but it will not uh, take care of the actual rendering this stuff and it will also not take care of how to output this to the final um, display. At the end, it actually could be not really a display, it could be some virtualized um, uh, output or even a different compositor. And uh, to implement this, we have now the um, IVI shell, uh, which is living in Western itself. Uh, IVI shell can load additional plugins. Uh, those plugins um, will implement Valiant protocol, um, and um, this protocol can be used in to control the applications. On the application side, uh, we also need to add something. Um, maybe it's not really um, the best idea if you are coming from desktop, but this is what IBI was using for a very long time. They always had some identifier for their applications. Um, and this IBI application protocol is really sm slim, so it's and small. It has, I think, one, one request and two events. Uh, we need this to assign unique ID to our valence surfaces. And of course, the drawback that application needs to be modified or some framework needs to be modified um, to implement this and to assign ID or to map the ID to the uh, valence surface which in variant uh, represents the application or the content of the application. Um, looking closer to the implementation as such, uh, how we realize this, uh, the Western is uh, its own open source project. Um, the IVI shell is living um, inside Western, so it is in the Western repository. And uh, the bluish plugins, um, they are in a different open source project. It's a Genevi project, and uh, ADAT is maintainer of this. Here we are developing uh, the controller plugins and maintaining this IVI VM protocol to control the application. IVI input protocol to control the input routing. Um, there are also some minimalist, uh, some uh, examples and wrapper of the layer manager protocol, which will ensure compatibility to some uh, defined uh, API in Geneva for window management. Um, yes, what does it sell? Yes. Uh, you could also see that here inside of IVI shell, you could also have some HMI controller built in. This is a different plugin um, which can also implement the video management if you don't want to use uh, this. 
and you know how you win, winner management should look like. There is only one use case or simple use case which um, can be implemented and which is really good defined. Um, then you can also do this with a HMI controller, um, which will then um, yeah, implement your window management. <coughs> so, um, what we can do with the IVIVM protocol? It's quite simple. We have three types of object. Uh, we have a screen. The screen is actually mapped to the output um, struct of Western, which at the end uh, represents a physical display most of the time. On the screen, we can put some layers. Uh, layers are just a logical object uh, to group the surfaces. You can scale layers, you can make it invisible, uh, you can um, define transparency, and also change uh, set order on the layers. And we have the IVI surfaces, uh, which actually uh, represent the application content. And there are some few events to get uh, notification about uh, the new object in the system, about new surfaces, new um, IDs, uh, if they're created and deleted, so that the HMI controller, which is sitting outside of Feston, can react on this um, and make it visible. It is actually also uh, not possible for application um, to be visible, so application cannot request uh, make me visible. Um, this logic has to be implemented in the um, HMI controller, which will get to know application is available. Um, then I would like to talk about this uh, tiny thing, the application, the IVI application protocol. Um, this was from, I think from, from this slide, or oh no. Uh, sorry, I'm spoiling my slides. This one. They had to modify uh, the application or framework. Actually, we would like to get rid of this uh, long term and convince also our customers to follow this. Um, and the idea is uh, to use a different protocol, because some protocol needs to be used from application side. Um, we decided to focus on the XDG protocol, which is also defined by the Western community, and actually used um, also uh, already in some uh, distributions and even different um, variant compositors. Um, there is also a stable version of it. Um, and we think this is a, like, a good protocol to be used uh, in the future um, also for AVI. Um, but still, we need to identify our um, applications and we need to define the ID uh, to be able to use the same um, IVIVM protocol. And uh, we defined now an additional uh, plugin for Western, uh, which is called ID Agent. Uh, this is um, work is going to be upstreamed in the I don't know, next week, maybe. Patches are already uh, provided. Um, we are planning, so the, the generic idea is just to define um, how to assign the ID to the application. On the HDG protocol, you have already uh, a lot of stuff which you can use for identifier, like a window name or application ID. And uh, in the ID agent, you need to implement some logic uh, which will take some of those attributes and uh, will say, okay, if this uh, application appears, then this is ID 5. Uh, you could also have uh, this more complex and your ID agent could also communicate with some database and ask someone to get the ID from this. Um, but this is an up to implement of this ID agent. Um, we think that uh, at the end, um, each project could have its own. Um, we uh, could provide some basic uh, basic implementation which will look up some configuration XML or something like this. 
Yeah, this is how it uh, will look like then if this will be implemented and available. We will still um, use the AVI shell, we will still use uh, the HMI controller. Uh, the major change is actually uh, only for application and uh, the biggest benefit we will get because of um, the application frameworks. Something like Qt or OpenSync Graph um, already have support for ECG, but they also have support for um, AIVI protocol, um, AIVI application protocol, but it is not really good implemented and not really uh, widely used. Uh, it's definitely better to focus on XG protocol in the application frameworks. And with this ID engine implementation, we are able um, to make applications visible without any modification in framework or application side. Um, and of course, we cannot force the customers to use the HDG shell protocol. They can still uh, use uh, IUI application protocol. It's still available. It's supported. But I think long term, this will be a good idea also because of the compatibility. You can easily port, exchange, and also reuse application or just uh, try some application to run a new IVI system which are already running somewhere else. Okay, the next use case we want to um, be able to manage the, with Western is a, a distributed HMI. Um, this we are getting uh, more and more requested um, to implement something uh, we should realize the use case we have a different um, um, hardware, different displays, the content is generated on one place and is presented on another. And um, there are also very different systems and this, all this stuff is quite complex and also the communications is very, uh, very com complex between those components and NGMIs. And uh, there is actually no real um, standard way um, to implement this. There are some components and some uh, implementations available which will uh, be able to help a lot. For example, Ramses, um, which was also open source recently from BMW. But um, we would also um, to be able to, to support this use case uh, a bit better. And the idea is to implement another plugin for Western, uh, which should use FileZem. FileZem is actually um, very similar to Valiant as such, but uh, um, there is one major change uh, or difference. It cannot carry file descriptors, but uh, it can cross you um, Binary, so it, it can uh, device. Sorry, it can really communicate to outside. It can use TCP/IP sockets and um, get connected to a different system um, with a uh, variant. Sorry, what's oh, them? Um, the complete picture will look like this. We will get additional what's uh, transmitter. Um, this transmitter will actually implement one additional output object in Western. And if you will be outside of Compositor, if you will be on the application side um, or in framework, you will just see additional output. You, you should know this output is um, um, virtualized. And if you will put some content to it, then the Vitsyn transmitter will be notified and will start perform some actions. So it will uh, stream this uh, to a different device. If you have virtualized system, it could uh, use some graphic sharing mechanism to share the content uh, and notify a different uh, operating system. Um, the GMI controller is actually also a client of Western. It will also get this virtual output. Um, in the same way, so it can then use the IVI VM to assign application um, to this uh, new created output. And um, 
yeah, this is uh, the idea. Uh, but it is quite hard to implement something really generic which can be reused between Linux and Android or Android to Android uh, and um, some proprietary operating systems which are um, not widely used in desktop but in automotive. Um, also to implement uh, the compatibility mode with hypervisors, um, it's not quite challenging. Uh, but this is what we are yeah, planning to do uh, next years. And um, those are just a list of questions uh, what are like not, not solved now and where we are getting a request again and again. But uh, for now, there are no real solution, uh, let me say, in the lower platform level. Um, and we are still yeah, thinking how to how to solve this, how to implement this, or maybe the final result will be it's, it's not meaningful to be implemented in Western, it should be done on the upper layers. Yeah, I think that's all for my talk. Do you have some questions? Oh, good. <laughs> oh, not so good. Yeah. Do you have a feeling of the latency now between what and remote displays and, uh, for example, forwarded info? Depending on uh, what you will do, the Linux channel is uh, very fast. If you will use a very simple uh, system without load, um, in real test, we could not recognize. So you should be very careful looking to a display uh, to see what is where is the original content and where is the fake output content. But it's again like uh, it's idle system without any law. The real use case will be m maybe a little bit hard, but I cannot tell you the number in milliseconds. But it's usable, definitely. IBM Shell was originally designed with the idea of a single full screen only and one screen per device. Uh, in modern cars, that's quite out of fashion, I would say. Uh, do you still believe that IBM Shell, as it is designed, make a sense or we just could we use an XDG concept and just have a controller to stop the application to do whatever they want? Does it create a lot of side effect without yeah. Actually, I don't think that IVI shell is somehow limits you to the number of displays output. Yeah. So it's not r related. If you have five outputs, you can use them all. There it's is difficult to manage them when you have different size of screens and different color depths. It doesn't manage that at all. You know, I know, but so we know it's difficult. IVI shell is not will, will not limit you to do this. Uh, this what will happen if you use IVI shell? Um, then you will have differently um, arranged displays. So in the default behavior of Western, that it will extend the display. You'll have all the display in one big coordinate space. If you will use IVI shell, uh, you will get this completely distinct. So it will be different displays with different resolutions. So you cannot have a um, you know, one common virtual space. But you could arrange your layer and surface setup that it will look like one common space. So it's, uh, but I think especially for the AVI, you don't want to have extended displays. You have to have se separate. Well, a very typical use case is to move, for example, the map. Yeah from the big screen to the small screen under when you have another application starting up. That's difficult. You probably have to design the application in line with the hardware, which is really very old fashioned and extremely limited. It means the application has to get the knowledge of the real implementation of the graphics side. I can, so maybe we can talk later. There is a way to uh, realize this use case with a IVI VM protocol. They can move your application to a different screen with the like, same application content, same surface. Because 
I didn't show this here. What you can do, you can assign the same surface to different layers at the same time. But you cannot assign the same layer to different screens. This we didn't implement because uh, of complexity. Uh, but if you will assign your surface to different layers, you can uh, use the layer capabilities to scale this differently and assign this to different display uh, with different resolution. This would be... Okay, so we are time for more questions, so thank you. Okay, yeah.